we are back with another episode today we are going to speak with senior supreme court advocate colin gonzalez colin gonzalez has won several awards he has uh, been a lawyer in several path breaking cases so today let's talk to him before we get into the interview please subscribe to the channel and please also if you like it please like our channel comment on it and also do share now let's get into the interview welcome mr gonzalez we are glad to have you on our show so thank you sonal i'm happy to be here okay so let's get right into the interview please tell us a little bit about uh, the current uh, case which is in the supreme court about uh, violence against uh, christians that has been uh, where you are the advocate for it okay i'll i'll tell you a little background in 2021 2022 after decades of peace between you know communities christian community was not attacked the christian community was not attacking people peace for so many decades and then all of a sudden in 2021 you have attacks taking place in about 10 states of the country and they were not just a few attacks here and there the attacks were about 600 attacks every year and the attacks were the same whether in this state or that state it was the same kind of attack so there's a sunday prayer meeting all of a sudden a hundred hooligans will come then they'll break up the premises they'll hit people they'll catch the priest and catch him and take him to the police station and then lock him up there and very often the police come with the group so you can make out that this is a group that has influence political influence and they are well connected to the police establishment and so on and then they put the priest in jail and then the priest has to get bail and 10 or 20 civilians have to go and get bail and so on and so forth a frightening situation developed all across the country now when you look at the fir's that they lodge on the basis of which they do this attack you will find the names of all the well known communal organizations in the country i don't want to mention the name this parishad this thing this thing this thing all and these are the well known communal organizations that have engaged in lynching killing muslims engaging in hate speech in the country and now of course with the current government at the center you have freedom to do whatever you like no please going to touch you because you have the backing of the police force administration central government and very often the state government as well so it's on the letter heads they they giving it to you on the letter heads to the sho police station i believe these people are engaged in conversion therefore etc 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 and the funny thing is the victim is put in jail the victim of these communal attacks are put in jail and the assailant is proudly moving around outside after breaking up a prayer meeting and beating people and arresting the pastor moving around and the hall will be in shambles and the statues will be broken and people will be injured this is law and order in the current world in which we live what a terrible situation true so that's how a group took the matter to court but it is uh, i think it's quite clear that if there's no attack for so many decades and peace between the christian communities and other communities when they start simultaneously and they are copycat kind of actions prayer meeting break in arrest etc it means that there is a political mind coordinating these groups in these eight states 
to attack Christians. Frontal attack on Christians. Okay, so you are actually saying that these attacks are politically motivated. Totally political motivated. And we know the names of these groups. So these are the groups. These are the hooligan groups that are linked to the central government. So if you see all the lynching cases and the names of the groups that come there, same groups. If you see the persons engaging in hate speech, same groups. If you see the persons who are rioting, same groups. So the central government has a whole range of it's almost like a paramilitary force, fully armed, fully ready, a lot of muscle power and great backing of the police force and the administration and the central government. That's a very, a very charged kind of allegation you're making here, uh, Mr. Collins. Uh, yeah. You're right. It's a charged allegation. 600, 2022. 600 again, 2023, 2024, 700, 800 it goes to. And here we are protesting. Here we are, you know, going to call. 2023, 720, according to United Christian Forum. Yes, 700. Called. And they don't bother about court cases and all that. They have no regard for the court, no fear of the court, no worry about the court, no worry about anybody. It seems as if, you know, they are a very influential kind of group, very powerful group. And if they are linked to the central government, obviously they have a right to feel that they are law to themselves. Uh, Nobody there, can... It's often said that there is no conviction in any of these cases. Would you like to share light on that? Is that true? I'll tell you, this is the, this is the trick in these anti-conversion laws. They were made to enable these riots to take place. Why do I say that? There's a word used in the anti-conversion law, which is allurement. Right? So if the Christians have a hospital and I tell a, a, you know, a sick boy or girl from some other religious community, please come, you can go, you can use this, maybe free of charge. Or if there's an educational institution and I promote some people, allurement is a, is a way of saying that you took that person to the Christian hospital because you wanted to convert that person into a Christian. Similarly, in, in schools, you're trying to convert them. You'll not find evidence of conversion, generally. Is there conversion? There is in India, no doubt about it. Many communities are converting. And there's a right to convert as well, but voluntarily. There's a right to convert. Conversion is not a crime, but forcing a person. And you will very rarely get instances of forced conversion. You'll get. But a learnment now is a total natural thing. If I have a if I have a school and I put in children from the other communities, will I be arrested as the principal? Or as the director of a hospital, will I be arrested? Because I told them, yes, you can come for treatment here. We'll give you free treatment. So this is this uh, this anti-conversion law is what because that's how they filed the FIR. Attack has taken place. Arrest of the pastor. Now, what is the section? There's no section at all. There's no crime. So then they had the anti-conversion law brought in, and the main thing is allurement. That you are trying to attract people to your religious community. Frankly, the way to propagate is a, is a fundamental right. You can propagate, you can spread your religion, you can try and convince people to change. All communities do it. Even the majority of the Hindus also campaign. Come, become a good Hindu and so on. And there's nothing wrong in that. All religious communities try to attract people to them. But that is voluntary. A prayer meeting is voluntary. Surely you can't start attacking people because of that. The US Commission for International Religious Freedom has repeatedly asked the US government to uh, uh, name uh, India 
as a country of particular concern this year also in fact this year they were upset and they actually wrote a letter the director there that uh, the government the us government has not named india and nigeria and uh, what do you have to say for the last four years they've been repeatedly saying this see so then i would prefer not to comment on this us government chakkar because it's becoming very dangerous for anyone to report and talk about this otherwise it appears as if we are like agents of the us government and we are supporting and promoting the us government in needling the indian government you know so it's better for me not to comment but oh. only to this extent i will say that the reporting is accurate the re- reporting on attacks on muslims is accurate on christians is accurate so in the in the world in the world indian intolerance is well known hate speech coming out of the most deadly kind is is well known now we are a different country we are not the country of mahatma gandhi and you know peace and non violence and all that we are a very violent country full of hate speech where in the world can you have a cabinet minister as in india from a cabinet minister telling people just before the de- starting the delhi riots desh ke gadaro ko goli maro salo to the traitors of india kill them in a public meeting so what has happened to our glorious india our peaceful india our wonderful india our great india cultured india spiritual india what has happened to it have people in power gone to the mad that they advise people in public go and kill this community go and kill this community so instead of mentioning the americans i think the whole world is getting to know about what india and after the bbc documentary on the gujarat riots the indian government thought it and buried this issue nobody is talking about it everyone scared no one's talking because everyone's scared and then the bbc comes out with this accurate perfectly accurate document in fact on the it, it errs on the side of smallness it has a little little in it you know the gujarat riots were a massive riot so this is a small part and the indian government got so excited over excited that they banned the documentary not knowing that the whole country has virtually seen the documentary what a uh, thing the world knows what we are up to so in uh, you know in villages uh, in uh, rural areas and even in small towns there are pastors being arrested left right and center now it's become like a uh, like the process is the punishment and economically it is draining the community uh, and now the attacks are in delhi also there are many attacks uh, what do you think in, in in all these cases are they going to be able to keep on you know going to the courts it's delayed they are there inside so see, the whole process is becoming itself the punishment see what is clear to me after doing this uh, after studying this issue for the last 3 4 years there's a breakdown of law and order in this country total breakdown and this government can do anything it wants to anybody at any time is there anybody to check this government no is there any force to check this government no is there any way of stopping these killings no so for the first time in my career as a lawyer 30 35 years of doing law i feel that the law has become useless what is the use if people don't heed the call of the law that you must obey the law then the law becomes useless if policemen themselves are the law breakers then what is the use of the law in constitution and structures and institutions what is the use what hope do we indians have what yeah. hope do we have to survive and be alive and not be killed and not be lynched and not be massacred you and not be a very grim picture you're painting a very grim picture you want to tell us about manipur i mean that's grim also you are representing them also 
the tribal manipur the kuki tribal communities the Ku manipur uh, tribal organizations so now you're absolutely right it's a it's a good question actually asked after the attacks on christians although in manipur i we are not we are not painting it as an attack on christian we are painting it as an attack on tribals yes it is yes. true that all the tribals most of the tribals are christian so it is also an attack on christians but the real thrust is tribal identity to attack the tribals and can you imagine something like 200 people 200 cookies killed can you imagine the army is there in manipur because imphal and the areas of manipur were always areas where the army is there and the paramilitary forces are there i know that that's right they, uh, that uh, whole situation they are not uh, saying that this is a religious in, uh, attack but over 300 churches were burnt there and uh, destroyed so by default it, and uh, even naga churches got destroyed and even methi churches got destroyed apart from the kuki churches which is the uh, main fight between the kukis and the uh, methis but uh, despite all of that the churches have been destroyed in in the hundreds so it is an attack on uh, religion also it is and the numbers that you mention are absolutely accurate 300 churches roughly would be absolutely accurate and then you know thousands of houses burnt and all that but the saddest thing you know sonal is i feel there is no hope in this country to fight back i mean people are fighting people are fighting but every institution has failed us every institution has failed us because the main assailants are roaming large if the main assailants are not caught if our police force doesn't have the guts to do this what hope does a ordinary tribal have to live in peace in this country it's a breakdown of a democracy it's the end of democracy i think and if this goes on in 24 i could well imagine the end of democracy oh. that's a huge allegation we are actually in the election year and heading into election in about 3 4 months and what do you see as a future if you see i mean what do you see going forward i don't know i feel uh... the uh, the uh, central government is very powerful i feel that they are electorally very astute in the way they do things i think they have harnessed the power of religion very well but i see them leading us to the end of democracy in this country it is not as if majority is right and it is not as if majority rule and winning election means that you are doing good not at all both can go together you can win elections and be uh, come back to power and you can finish up the country both can happen simply and my feeling is it is going to be the finishing off of democracy in india is the end of democracy oh. that's and then the world will see what a terrifying thing it can be when democracy is killed everyone talks about the emergency of indira gandhi oh indira gandhi did this did this including my loved prime minister indira gandhi did this did this did this, this you don't realize today the emergency which is already existing in india is 10 times worse the you talked about the new law the new criminal laws which have come in that they are also draconian so we were very provoked and very intrigued when our beloved amit shah home minister said i am bringing these laws because the old laws are british like laws and the old laws are very not only obsolete but barbaric anti indian So when we saw that speech, we were very intrigued. Let's see what are these anti-Indian laws. So we opened these laws. 
to study. So we kept the old laws. Old laws, part of it is British laws, which have come over and are continuing in India, especially in criminal law. And then we looked at the new laws side by side. And what do we find, Sonal? What do we find? We find that the laws made by the present government is 10 times worse than the British. Would you want to give some certain example? I'll give you, right away, I'll give you. So, what do you, how do you fool parliamentarians? In any way, the parliamentarians, opposition group is out. But how do you fool them? We have at last got rid of this legacy, colonial legacy. We've got rid, sounds good, sounds great, getting rid of colonial legacy. But when you look at the laws, you realize British laws, even British laws, even the laws made by our colonial masters, much better than the laws made by the Indian government today. I'll give you one example. Take the terrorism laws that is there in the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. Right. It's a draconian statute made by the Congress. And when Chidambaram introduced these laws in Parliament, there was a hue and cry, including by the BJP. Oh, draconian law, etc., etc., etc. So he said, giving you two protections and giving the public two protections, safeguards. One is the authority, the second is sanction. The authority is an independent person and putting it in the act, an independent expert who after the police have investigated the case and collected all the evidence, it will be shown to the expert and the expert will be asked to make a report. Should you proceed with a terrorism case or not? So you see all the evidence that the police have got and you give your opinion. Should the government... So it's not the police that will decide prosecution of a person for terrorism. That safeguard of the authority. UAPA provisions have come into general law, the criminal procedure code. That safeguard removed. Second safeguard is sanction. Before you go ahead, the government, the home ministry will decide whether that police officer should be given sanction to prosecute. Again, the government will look at all the evidence so that a person is not wrongly prosecuted. A policeman can have a vendetta against a particular person. Now he can't decide. Home minister will decide, authority will decide. And the second safeguard removed. So what do we have? We have UAPA, the terrorism statute provisions in the general law introduced, minus the safeguards. So draconian removal of sanction, doubly draconian removal of authority, triple drug. Can you imagine what kind of things are going on? And blatantly lie to parliament. Blatantly lie to the people. Who's going to read? Ah, you've been told that the Bitti Samana ka jo kanun hai wo rad ho gaya. Usko nikal diya hum. Lies, you know. Lies to the people. You are painting such a grim picture. What then for the Christian community? Which uh, going forward? Pray to God. Pray to God. <laughs> no, I'm happy to see one thing, but I'm happy to see the Christian community organizing for the first time. I was very critical of the Christian community. You know, after Kandamal also, I was very disappointed because we did a case in the Supreme Court on Kandamal. Where was that? Uh, where were the, you know, the leadership of the Christian community? Where were the cardinals and bishops who were speaking out? Where were you they right your... now? Where are they right now? Even one of my sheep goes missing. It is as dear to me as anything else. The shepherd and the flock. And your flock are getting massacred? And your cardinals are not speaking up and your bishops are not speaking up. I was so upset. But this time when the attacks took place, first of all, there were young Christians who came up and started litigating against the government. Good young Christians, very competent. Competent people. There's an ADF, an organization in Delhi. 
good, mature, sensible, responsible, intelligent, hardworking young lawyers who collected the data from across the country and went to the court. I was so happy to see that. And I was so happy to see some of the bishops and the archbishops in their own areas saying, enough is enough. It's a thing for us Christians. You know, we have a phrase that yeah, if, you, if somebody slaps you on your left cheek, turn the right cheek. <laughs> no, no, no. I doubt if Jesus said that, but if he said it, I won't agree with Jesus also. Now we have to fight back. As a Christian community, you have to fight back. And fight back vigorously. Fight back by law, you mean? Ah, by law, yes, of course. I'm a lawyer. I always mean by law. <laughs> no, no, of course. Nonviolence is very important to maintain in, a, in the face of a, an organization that is so violent. If any community thinks of violence, you've had it, they'll just massacre you. It has to be nonviolent, but it has to be very strenuous nonviolence. Firm, strong, willing to die for your cause, that kind of non-violence. Non-violence is as powerful as violence in that sense. But of course, you have to stick to the path of non-violence. Otherwise, those who are specializing in violence, they will make Kima of us. So you actually are forcing a very, very bleak future for the country itself, not just for the minorities and the tribals, but also for the... For everybody. No hope. If you're a slum dweller, they'll take a bulldozer and come and bulldoze. Mr. Yogi from UP has specialized in bulldozing all his enemies. And mostly they'll be Muslims. You see. So... But we are also economically dweller. progressing a lot. I don't know, Sonal, I don't know. I don't believe the things that we read in the papers about the economy growing. I don't believe that. Maybe I'm a total fool on economics. Possible. I'm a total ignorant person on economics and the finance of the country. But I don't believe the lies we are told. And I think soon we will come to realize. When things suddenly burst, begin to burst, I think then we'll be able to realize that all the stories we were told about the financial well-being of the company, of the country, are not correct. Look at this great industrialist, whom we thought was so a saint and, you know, he's earning so much, billions and billions and billions, and he's such a good industrialist. He's in this, he's in that, he's in this, he's in that. Everything he's doing with government, teaming up with Modi, Mr. Modi, and doing this. And then we find, oh, there's hanky-panky here, some hanky-panky there, some hanky-panky there, money being taken like this, money being brought like that, which if an ordinary Indian does, he would be arrested day one. But if he is who he is, then he'll get 10 times more contracts. See, if there's no honesty in the country, if there's no spirituality, if there's no love for your brothers and sisters, a country can't grow. If there is no morality in a country, a, a country of very moralistic, honest, upright people, if the spine of the country is not like that, how can a country become a great country? So with the violence in our country, with the discrimination against people, can our country, ever, our beloved India, can it ever become great? Can we ever become a great nation? Great nation is not GDP at all. Great nation is the strength of human beings bonding as one big family. Loving each other, caring for each other, spirituality, morality, goodness, kindness. This is what makes a nation great. Not a big religious structure here, a big religious structure there. Some massive constructions happening. A new parliament building where you didn't need a new parliament building at all. These are not things that make the nation great. This is all drama. All drama. 
and lying to the people and misleading the people. So let us see what happens. Ultimately, democracy always survives. We saw with fascism. We saw with Hitler and Mussolini and Franco. We saw what happened to them after almost controlling three quarters of the world militarily. So much power, so much energy, so much money, so many guns. Democracy came back. People gave their lives to bring democracy back. It happened in India. I have faith in the people of India. The illiterate, ill-clad, hungry people of India. They will bring a great people's revolution and bring democracy. Keep democracy or bring democracy to India. The Indians are a spiritual group. Whatever you might say, whatever we may do wrong, but there is a spirit in the poor of India. It burns in their hearts to do good for the country. That spiritual revolution will take place. That spiritual resistance will take place. That spiritual courage will unfold. The rich and the powerful will of course bend before the mighty, but the poor will not. You will see that. India has always been like that. So you that is why you have that hope in the people of India. Yeah, that is why our future is secure. Because the people of India, when they decide to act and resist, they will do so with tremendous fury, tremendous energy. Okay. Wait for that, I suppose. Okay. So on that very hopeful note, we will end. I'm really thankful to you for coming for this interview and talking to us, especially in times when you yourself are not seeing so much of uh, hope in the immediate future, but uh, in the long term future of the country, you are hopeful. We are thankful to you for talking to us. Thank you, Sona. Swapne Suna, senior advocate Colin Gonzalez, ka interview. Or unke kafi hopeful end me. Suna apne ki kis tarah se wo Bharat ke logo se kafi aasha rakte hain that they will eventually stand up for the country. This is a very, very hopeful note on which we would end this episode. If you interview this interview, please comment on this interview. Please comment on this interview. Subscribe to this interview. And please like and share it. Anyway.